and we're going to demonstrate how to remove the hose, replace the hose. So inside is some lubricant. We need to empty the lubricant, open up the front cover, and then we have access to the hose and we can remove it and put in the new one. And we're going to cover that in a minute. So start off with, we need to remove the lubricant. In order to drain this, we've got a convenient little valve, ball valve. Just open it up and your lubricant will come out. Drain on your lubricant, remove your door. Now you have access to get to the hose. Re take out the old hose, replace it with a new hose. Okay. I'm gonna stop it there. It's always good to have a catch tray down below. We don't want any environmental issues with lubricant going anywhere. Okay, so what we're gonna do here is remove the hose. So I need to take off this roller assembly, rotate it around to let this hose be free. Simply undo, bit of a tight fit. If you got a little stubby wrench, it's remove these two roller assembly bolts to hold it to the rotor. shims with it put it off to the side now what we have to do is rotate this roller all the way over so we can free up the hose because it's holding it in by pinching it I will do it manually so I've got the cover off on the back of the motor and it gives me access to the fan blades and then I will rotate it either way Okay, that gives me access to the hose. I didn't do these first. Next, just pull this out from the back. That was just put on, so that came off actually fairly easily. But if that's been on for a while, a year or two years, yeah. Just cut it and then pull it off and put on your new hose. Now we want to measure this distance, set this up using shims. So we start off, we just take a measurement. We put a horizontal and then we'll measure this distance. I generally take it from the middle. Um, it's also a good time just to give a quick check to see if this surface is parallel with this surface. But overall, I just need to know this distance. Zero my calipers, and that's my initial measurement. So once I've got that, I just measure. And I get my number there, 27.3. Now I need to add shims, squeeze it in. So what we have to do is a couple things. We need to know the thickness of the wall of a hose. And we take it in four spots. So basically you just put it on, just look, watch. Mark it in four spots. I always put a T for the top. And we measure these four. And what we do with that, take your calipers and we measure the 12 o'clock position. The three, the six, and the nine. And then we record it on our sheet. Then what we do is we get a number that will give us, based on a calculation on what type of hose it is, what kind of pressure we want from the hose. We're gonna measure the distance that this squeezes the hose. So basically we have to squeeze the hose enough that it closes the hose in order for this pump to work. These are my shims. These are thick and these ones are thin. We've established that we need to add about just under two millimeters of shims. 
These ones are the thick ones. This one it says thick on there. These, if you measure them, they're just under a millimeter. So they're 0.88, 0.9, they're somewhere around there. On average. Loosen off these bolts. There's two bolts on this model. The one we're working on right now is a C25. And what I have to do is just make this so that I can put the shims in here. So I take my two shims, simply slide them in. Tighten up the bolts again. Snug them up. Because you want to make sure you get a good squeeze on these shims and get accurate measurement. Take these calipers again, and now I just, it's moved all this forward, so I take another measurement, and you just want to be able to just feel the surface of that roller, that's about right. Measure again with the calipers, I get 27.21, and I want 27.31. So 27.21 is a bit smaller than 27.37, if I'm under, that's good because it's a little bit tighter. It's better to be a bit tighter than it is to be loose. So I'm okay with those two shims and now I'll just snug it up. Okay, now I have to do the same thing for, this is roller A and I'll do the same thing for roller B. So I'll just rotate it. Same process. That's how you set up this distance. Now we want to install the hose. We have two options. I'm going to do the second option, but one option is we put the hose on and we connect the motor and we can run it, squeeze it on. If we don't have that option, which is this case, just manually, I'm going to actually take this one off and help put the hose in place. So I'm going to pop this up. Just want to repeat what I've said before. We usually do this horizontal to measure this distance. Theoretically, you can measure anywhere along this curve because this is supposed to be the same equidistant all the way around on this curve. But just for habit simplicity, we just always put it horizontal. So I'm just going to remove this roller assembly. Keep the shims with it, put it to the side. Now I want to install the hose. Just take soap and water, get a little squirt on the hose connector. Same thing with the hose. We use soap and water instead of lubricant because if you use lubricant, it doesn't evaporate and it stays there and it can slide off. If you use soap and water, uh, it dries up and it will keep itself in position. Before we put that on, we've got to have our hose clamps. This one's very important. Hose clamp both ends. If you put these on so that the heads face the same way, you'll be okay good tip make sure you put those on first because to put them on after it's a bit of a nightmare okay so just slide one end on and slide the other end on So we're still putting the hose on. It can be kind of resistant. A little bit of soap, more soap. 
interesting action. Get it close. Okay, and then just simply put that in place. That gap down here will decrease once we run the roller. But it is good to have it snug up against here. Okay, now, it's good to pay attention to where these guys Probably a question that'll come up now is where do you place these? And what we're trying to do is get it onto the barb. I'll just grab one. This end is barbed. So basically we want to make sure that this, these hose clamps go over the bars. We do not want to have anything past this area. So we've got to be at least there arm. And as you can see, this one is not in enough. On this one, it's too far over, so I still have to move it over. So now it's at least to the edge there and it's going to clamp up here. That'll be good and secure. So I just got to get this one to look the same as that one. Make sure when you're doing this, you favor the metal and not the hose. You don't want to, you don't want to cut into the hose. Okay, that's kind of where we want it. Now we tighten these up. We just want to make sure that they don't protrude past this door because they'll hit the door. So just make sure they're the right spot. As you tighten them, the clamps will draw in. Putting this back in, it's a good idea to use a little, little bit of lube and just squirt it on the holes there. And that should help it slide in quite nicely. Okay, now your hose is in place. Our next task is to get this roller on here and then we put this roller on that side. So if this is hooked up with electricity, we just simply turn on the motor, rotate this, this will come up on the, to the hose, go into position, and then we can put that on. I'm gonna do it manually. I'm just rotating the fan. It's nice because of the reduction in the gearbox. It's actually quite easy to turn to make it go into position. Now, I just reassemble that roller assembly. Put my shims in, don't forget those. Make sure you put the shims in smooth with the rotor don't want to be too far back you can't go too far back anyways but if you too far back more importantly if you're too far forward it could scrape on the front it's got to be nice and flush with the rotor thread in these bolts our hose is in place our rotors in place our roller assembly is back on next we put on the front cover and then we're gonna put on the front cover a little trick I usually do is I take the bolts, I reverse them, and I stick them through so that they're like, act like pegs. Then I have to put the gasket, front cover gasket on. Makes life just a little bit easier. Then the front cover. And you can hang those on there. And once you have that in place, then we just bolt it up. Okay, so basically put your bolts in place. Uh, make sure the gaskets go. 
This will have a wash, a flat washer and a lock washer. It will be on that place there. Okay, and then we basically tighten these bolts, put all of them in, and tighten up to the torque specs. You once you clamp this down and the torque specs are met, um, you'll see it clamping on the gasket. And as long as it's not pinched, just make sure it's in a good position. And that will put the cover on. And then basically we just fill it up with the lubricant. And I usually just fill it up through here. Now we're gonna refill the cavity with lubricant. Um, easiest method is just to go through the breather, put the breather in position. Make sure that this valve, it was open when we drained it. Make sure it's closed. Stuff goes in, open, it comes out. So just take the required amount of lubricant that you need for the pump. Check the chart. You just simply put that on the top there and pour it in. I lift it up a little bit to let the air in and out. There's only one place for air to go in and out. So if I have this too close, it'll bubble up and spill over. So just give it some room to get air in there and take the appropriate amount of lubricant that you need and simply pour it in. Go slow. You go too fast, it will spill over. Make sure there's no debris or any kind of foreign material that can get in there. Do your best to keep it clean.